Hey everyone, got another knife review for you. This is a review of this guy right here. This is a custom Peter Recenti, or Peter R as he's known, on the forums. This was specially made for a forum member and was recently traded to me. Uh, but this one is called the Alpha Hunter series and codenamed the Bulletproof. Um, I want to do a quick comparison against some of these other knives that you guys are probably all per, uh, pretty familiar with. Right here you have the ZT0551. Uh, uh, this is the Hinder design. I just got this one, so I'll be looking out for a review on this knife. Um, here you have the large Micarta Sabenza 21. And then uh, here you have the military titanium. And then kind of as a joke, this is my custom Martin uh, small Tejas. Uh, but just how you see how big this blade and this knife is compared to uh, this little Martin right here. And then uh, I guess, you know, the knife that it would be compared to the most would be this Strider SMF. Uh, this is my CC model, uh, but the Strider SMF, very similar blade shapes, you know, the same kind of deployment hole here. This is a little ovular uh, hole. And then uh, titanium, this one has the um, G10 uh, front side. And on this Peter R here, uh, you have a carbon fiber uh, front side as, as well as a um, carbon fiber backspacer. So I'm going to talk about uh, this knife a little bit. Uh, some of the specs is, again, very similar to the Strider SMF. It's got a 4-inch blade. And... Um, with about a three and a half inch cutting surface. The blade stock as well is very similar to that of the SMF. Uh, this one says it's a three sixteenths inch blade stock and which measures out to be about 4.8 or so millimeters. I think that's pretty much the same as the SMF here. Um, so the difference here is that this is S30V Whereas the Peter R uh, custom here is a blade stock, you know, 3 16 inch of S90V. So that is a very exotic steel. It's the super steel of our age right now, apparently. I think comparable to, you know, M390 or, you know, I think better than M4 because S90V is stainless and M4 uh, is not uh, stainless. So, um, that's one of the things that definitely attracted me to this trade. You know, having a that thick of a you know blade stock of S90V is pretty amazing. Um, again, you have the titanium frame lock and titanium pocket clip as well, deep carry pocket clip. But I'll talk a little bit about that in this overview and review. Again, carbon fiber. You know, just it, the way it shines in the light is pretty. You know, carbon fiber is a pretty amazing. It's a really, really cool material um, to, to play around with and just to look at. Aesthetically, this knife is beautiful. Um, and, you know, the, the way that these titanium scales are milled out as well, and you see that you will, with the polish, you know, how it reflects in the light is really, really awesome. Um, something that's kind of unique that, you know, to this knife is these screws, um, pivot included, uh, it's kind of like, it's not really a spanner tool. You can just use a normal screwdriver to um, secure these screws in. And on the flip side, you've got torque screws. Um, so it's not quite as a pain in the butt to adjust as uh, the Strider uh, is. You know, you have to have that special spanner tool uh, to open up this knife. But the pivot on the Strider is definitely a lot beefier uh, than what you have here on the Peter R Bulletproof or Alpha Hunter series. Um, so a couple of things about this knife. You know, the the thickness here um, is, I'm not sure how, how big it is. I think it's definitely the stock of the titanium and the carbon fiber is definitely a lot larger than 0.125. I'd probably put it around 0.16 or, or so, but I, you know, I haven't measured it. I don't have calipers or, or anything like that. Overall feel of the knife, you know, you've got a double choil here to, to grip your hand in here for any kind of fine cutting, uh, as well as, you know, if you do hold it towards the end, you know, very it's a pretty comfortable knife in general. 
um, and, and a large one at that. You know, this blade, this blade width is, is huge. You know, def even thicker or, th you know, wider than, than the Strider is. Um, definitely when you compare it to a Sebenza, it just completely dwarfs uh, this blade. Even though the Sebenza's edge, technically, I guess, is actually longer um, than that of the Peter R. Um, so a couple of, you know, those are, I think these, those are all strengths of this blade. You know, again, the blade stock and the, you know, the, all the materials, the high quality exotic materials that he uses, you know, makes for a, a beautiful knife and a, a very well-made knife. Um, but in terms of fit and finish, there are a couple things that I wanted to highlight. You know, if you're thinking about, you know, do, going and working with Peter R about making a custom knife, uh, a couple of things to to note um, as your, you know, if you're gonna make that big purchase. With this deep carry pocket clip, you know, that's the one, uh, one gripe that I have. You know, he uses these uh, large nut screws, uh, they're Torx, Torx bit screws. And, uh, you know, this might be an easy fix. You know, if you do have the right screws that could, you know, bury down deeper, then, you know, your pocket will fully, um, you know, go in there. But as it stands, you know, when you do put this in your pocket, it, it sits like this because your pocket's going to, you know, inter it's going to interfere with these screws and you're not going to be able to get it in because there's just not enough space, you know, between these screws and the pocket clip for your pocket to sit all the way in here. So I don't know if that's just something that Peter R., uh, Peter Vicente overlooked or, or what in this craftsmanship. Um, but that's one uh, quick gripe. Uh, in terms of the... Uh, the uh, you know cutting out of, of this titanium and the carbon fiber they're definitely very um, the edges is here it's not too bad it's somewhat rounded but here it's definitely very very sharp so it digs into your finger as you actuate the lock um, this this particular lock bar is also very tight I don't know with this cutout here um, on the outside whether or not that makes it a lot tighter or what, but it's really hard to actually, I mean, I really had to push in and it really cuts in to my thumb and you can see the line that it left on my thumb. And I'm trying to, you know, I'm, I thought I'd built calluses up on my thumb, you know, with actuating a bunch of my knives, but um, you know, this one is really, really tight. Um, centering on here is pretty much near perfect, um, but you know, again, with the detent uh, on this ball detent right here, um, this is also really tight and I'm like, I'm like pushing out here to, to deploy it. Um, definitely not a knife that you could flick out uh, for sure, you know, like, uh, like a strider, you know, with, with a middle finger uh, deployment or whatnot, you know, it, it's a lot harder to deploy. It's not quite as smooth and I've already greased this one up with uh, Chris Reeve grease, the fluorinated grease, and it's pretty hard to deploy. So that's another uh, gripe that I have uh, about the, the construction, the fit and finish of this blade. Now inside the pivot, you've got bronze phosphor bushings. Um, you know, one of the bushings was kind of lopsided and, you know, the, the hole in, in the middle was kind of like a, I don't know, like a double hole. It's almost like kind of like this. And uh, so I don't know how, how the bushing fits around the, the pivot screw. Uh, so that's another, you know, little minor gripe. I don't know if that's really a big deal. But uh, finally, the, the one thing that I did notice about this knife that I thought was quite interesting. I've never seen this in a frame lock before. Maybe because I'm still, I don't know if you would consider me new to the knife collecting community, but um, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this in, in this video here um, with the lighting here. But this lock bar does not sit flush with the blade tang. The blade tang is actually sitting like this. And so it's this lock bar is actually only engaging the blade tang right here. Um, if anything, actually maybe just against the edge of, of the blade tang. So you're not getting a full, you know, blade tang to lock bar interface right there. Like, you know, like my two fingers would be sitting. It's actually more like this. Um, now, there's absolutely no blade play whatsoever. So I don't know if that really matters when it comes to the strength of this knife. You know, this blade tang also, you know, sits against this, uh, there's a, a blade stop pin here as well. And it kind of, it's kind of, um, 
buried within uh, this backspacer right here. So the backspacer sits against this uh, blade stop pin pretty well, and it, it works, you know, again, it works well. There's no absolutely, absolutely no up and down blade play. Side to side blade play, there's nothing there as long as this pivot is, is tightened down. Um, these screws are, are pretty big uh, compared to some of the other screws that I've seen out there. Um, so overall, you know, Peter Recenti on his website, I think it's alphahuntertactical.com, um, you know, on his website he talks and, and says that, you know, they're, they're constructing some of the uh, most overbuilt uh, knives out there, uh, or custom knives out there. So um, if I were to, you know, ask or, or, you know, evaluate whether or not this is an overbuilt knife, then I would definitely say yes. You know, this would be the ultimate, you know, working knife. I, I would have no problems other than maybe the carbon fiber. Um, but again, the carbon fiber makes it a very aesthetically pleasing. It's a beautiful knife, and it makes it a lot light. Uh, lighter than than what you'd expect in a knife this size um, so you know overall um, oh one thing really quick you know this is not really jimping this is kind of just carved out um, kind of like a rock almost and it's just again it's just there for aesthetics absolutely no effectiveness in terms of jimping my thumb is just sliding up and down uh, right there so Overall, you know, the Peter Recenti, I think, you know, he's an up-and-coming uh, custom knife builder. And I think he's, you know, most well known for uh, working on custom scales uh, for, you know, knives that you send, send in, like knife pimping and all that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, this being his first, uh, I think, one of his first series for this Alpha Hunter series and, and frame lock designs, um, it's, pretty, it's pretty amazing, the quality of his knife. You know, there you see his little... Um, mark of his trade, uh, Peter Recenti. Uh, you know, this is a pretty awesome knife in general, um, save for, you know, some of the fit and finish issues and just the, really this, you know, is the, the, the actuation of that frame lock, you really have to put a lot of effort in there and there's no way to flick this knife out. I mean, you really have to dig your thumb in and, and push it out. So, but, Again, that's just my uh, overview um, of the Peter Recenti um, Bulletproof Alpha Hunter series. Apparently only six of these uh, were made, so I don't know. I'm hoping that it'll um, gain some popularity and, and maybe gain some value. Uh, but here you have it again, some of the most well-known uh, upper production knives that are out there. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, please comment. Just let me know what you guys think about this knife. I'd really be interested in your guys' take. All right, so you guys take care. Uh, have a good one. Bye.